Ladies and gentlemen, hello. My name is Tomek Kowalski. I represent company Sequence, and during this presentation, together with Leszek Zalewski from BNP Paribas, we'd like to show you the approach how to implement broadly strong authentication methods, especially FIDO-based authentication methods, into the organization, but cross the board, not in some form of the islands, but cross the board organization. Let me start with some statistics at the early beginning. In May 2020, Microsoft disseminated information that more than 150 million people is using passwordless login onto Windows system every month. What is behind of the sentence uh, passwordless login onto Windows? Probably the meaning of that sequence is that users are using Windows Hello to log into the workstation. It means that the login process is tied to the workstation and nothing more. At the same time, over the world, we have nowadays 4 billion devices which supports FIDO authentication standards. Both of these statistics show us uh, a big, from one side, big challenge, from the second side, big opportunity for the FIDO standard and the applications environments. Let's split the applications environments in between two parts. The first part, shown on the left side, is type of customer-facing applications. And what we have to do if we'd like to introduce strong authentication methods, if we'd like to introduce FIDO support for those applications, we have to, of course, integrate some FIDO standard module with the applications. And until we have a few applications or only once and have full control over the application st uh, stack, it's not a problem. It's feasible because we can integrate doing that by developers and it's done. And it's the way how we are able to unlock the potential behind of the 4 billion devices to give them access to the applications in the supported way. But in the enterprise world, situation looks completely different because we are facing with a different light landscape, heterogeneous light landscape. We have many applications and thousands of users, and there are third party applications, and we cannot interfere with the code of those applications. There is many infrastructure cloud providers, there is many identity providers and for sure many identity sources. And it's really, really difficult environment to implement something new across the board. And that's the situation where, uh, when broker architecture can help because with the broker architecture, we can completely redefine the paradigm of user access security deployment, especially FIDO standard deployment because with the broker as a network component, we can deliver some support to the applications, to the FIDO standard on the go. And let's take into account some advantages which are behind of the, of the broker architecture. Firstly, we have users on the right side with, uh, with browsers which support FIDO standard with biometric readers, which are already built into the devices with, for example, uh, Windows, uh, Windows Hello components. And on the left side, we have applications which can not support FIDO standard. And in normal, traditional way, we have to integrate both of these words um, with broker in place and a strong authentication method, especially FIDO standard based method can be delivered to those applications without integration cost, without development cost, and can cover all the infrastructure application stacks broadly. Prior to broker model, companies was forced to introduce MFA or 2FA methods one by one to the application by interfering with their, with their code. But with uh, the broker architecture, we can spread virtual layer in between users and the applications and everything what is done in terms of the users and application security 
is done on the go on this particular layer. What advantages are behind of, the, uh, of that architecture? Firstly, we can use centrally managed system, uh, user security system. The implementation is low costly. The implementation is incredibly fast. And in the broker mode, all the changes, all, all, all the changes which are done in, uh, in terms of the strong authentication methods are done in one place. And the same way we are, we can use many different strong authentication methods, tools, or providers, and deliver them to the applications. And it is the way how to remove the vendor lock from the authentication and security space. Uh, these advantages uh, and value propositions turn directly into the figures, because previously I mentioned that we not interfere in the applications code. We are not interfering with the user environments. The meaning of that is we is, is broker architecture completely reduce software development engagement. If so, uh, the same way there is possibility to reduce both costs of the implementation and cost of the further maintenance activities. Let me show you an example on this, uh, this slide. On this picture, we have almost all the components which are expected to provide the proper secure authentication in between users and the application is our organization. We have web browser, which supports FIDO standard. We have computer or mobile phone, which also supports FIDO standard by biometric readers, by maybe Windows Hello in our workstation. But prior to sequence, all those components was tied to the unit, tied to the desktop, for example. And on the left side, we have applications which probably not support FIDO standard yet or in case of some legacy applications, uh, it is probably impossible or very, cost, very costly to introduce FIDO standard to, to that application stack. And the answer is the broker, broker in the middle, which helps leverage all those FIDO standard based components and introduce them into the applications. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Right now, I'd like to pass you over to the representant of BNP Bariba Bank to show how BNP Bariba Bank leverage FIDO standard and introduce it broadly to the infrastructure and the applications. Thank you. Hi, my name is Leszek Zalewski. I'm a senior security architect at BNP Bariba Bank Poland. We are an entity that is part of a worldwide group that is a leader in the global banking market and financial markets as well. Our presence in the Polish banking market has been a long and fruitful one, but uh, it consisted of many, many mergers, mergers and acquisitions of entities that were already present in the Polish market. That resulted in a complex environment that has been integrated into our IT landscape. We ended up in with dozens of legacy applications, which were of course on mostly web apps, but uh, due to the highly a regulated nature of the financial markets in Poland, we were tasked with keeping those applications still running in archive or read-only mode for a long period of time after uh, the last write has been made into them. Many of the developers that were uh, developing those applications have already left the company some of the development that has been made by external companies uh, was no lo longer a feasible option due to uh, those companies uh, ceasing to exist. Our landscape uh, was 
com composed of mixed stationary and mobile workstations that were not compatible with new authentication mechanisms. And uh, we came into the into a conclusion that we have a priority in reducing risk and uh, modernizing the application access mechanisms that are already in place. The COVID pandemic was a large factor into that. Everything in the IT and financial area accelerated. But pre-COVID, we had a passionate mobile workforce. We had about 5,000 mobile workstations with around 8,500 employees at that time. We implemented multi-factor authentication and modern authentication mechanisms only for a small fraction of our applications. And most of those were uh, related to customer facing uh, applications or internal applications designed for employee access, but with access from the internet. The single sign-on features were limited in use and uh, not so widespread. We had a lot of problems to solve. We had different identity sources for different systems. Some of our systems included uh, internal user databases with uh, locally stored passwords. Uh, we had a high... We, seen that uh, the general landscape due to a COVID pandemic was uh, much riskier than before. And we were aware that uh, password leaks and password reuse by our employees is a high risk factor. And uh, of course, the reuse of passwords is a common problem uh, in and complex systems. We had limited adoption of, of modern passwordless authentication solutions. We investigated into different multi-factor authentication uh, solutions and uh, came up uh, with uh, uh, came up with information from our users that uh, with the use of multiple applications, the multi-factor authentication based on time-based one-time passwords isn't a good solution because it creates a lot of uh, tr friction uh, between the IT department and the users. And due to the fact that we had a lot of legacy applications, we had uh, limited uh, options into developing the applications that uh, were already in the landscape and had no budget or limited budget for developing those applications and implement, implementing the multi-factor authentication solutions into them. After scouting the market, we came up with uh, an option to introduce a security broker. We found out that uh, the implementation of uh, multi-factor authentication would lead to a drastic reduction in uh, risk presented by uh, accessing our apps. Uh, we would lo love to use the the FIDO keys binding that uh, could be accepted by the security broker uh, that we came on to using. And most of all, the most important factor was that the applications did not need any development whatsoever. We would love to. Uh, we want to start at the uh, project of implementing the security broker with a vision of a future authentication. We wanted to switch apps to passwordless authentication for our users, especially for the 
sensitive information with, uh, within those applications and that we could use the security brokerage functions uh, to double check the user's identity when accessing certain functions or certain information within those applications. We wanted to use biometric signatures and push notifications for identity verification. We wanted to integrate newly developed apps with the same existing uh, multi-factor authentication solutions. When the, our environment evolved during the COVID era, we had to switch and accelerate uh, the evolution on, of the IT environment on our side. We, we had to become a mobile first workforce with rapid deployment of mobile workstations. We've deployed all around 2000 laptops in the first few months of the pandemic, reaching 9000 deployed at the moment. We uh, had a lot of uh, a lot of priority, uh, a lot of weight put into a uh, wide, widespread adoption of multi-factor authentication solutions. Almost all of our workstations at the moment have a multi-factor or passwordless uh, out access enabled. We had a lot, tens of applications that uh, are legacy applications, some of which are uh, on no longer in development that contain sensitive and uh, financial data, either uh, of the bank itself or of our clients, uh, which are uh, some of those are uh, in read only mode. And we have already almost 200, uh, 200 applications in the pipeline for integration and uh, in testing to. Uh, and waiting in testing to be implemented on the production environment. We have uh, managed to populate the, our environment with uh, the adoption of single sign-on mechanisms with MFA implemented so that our users would have uh, less need to remember the long and complex passwords, as well as so we have uh, the reuse of uh, the same passwordless solutions for the work stations and applications. We are now a passwordless entity in most of our applications. Thank you. Thank you for the attention. And I'd like to encourage you to contact with us, with Bobovas, the representant from BNP Pariva or, or I, for further information, for any more information about uh, how to introduce strong authentication methods cross the board in the heterogeneous environment in your organization. Thank you.